Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Contingency X. Today we are at US Optics. My name is Travis, and we're going to be doing a phenomenal tour of their facilities here. We have George, who's going to be our host. He's been in this industry for over 18 years, um, and he's going to be giving us a bit of an insight on what US Optics is, what makes their optics so phenomenal, and maybe we can get a little bit of what's coming next. So let's take a tour and have some fun. The drive behind uh, getting into the optics business was to build the best quality rifle scope that you could put onto a rifle and build it to the needs of the end user. So our roots are, are in custom built optics. We continue to offer our custom shop optics and recently we have unrolled our line of commercially off the shelf uh, rifle scopes that either can be ordered from us or through our dealer base which is also supported by distribution. Uh, the, Commercial off-the-shelf products are made in the same facility by the same technicians, same components, uh, same build lines as any custom-built optics. So really what it comes down to is commercial products are a reflection of our most popular and uh, repetitive builds that we've done over the years. At US Optics, we manufacture parts in-house and we also outsource our machining to local shops. What you're seeing here is Brian running the machine on some smaller components like these brass reticle assemblies. It's a lock ring and a housing. Uh, we try to keep as much of the work in-house that we can, but we're not a big job shop with the machine, so we rely on local talent here uh, to make some of our bigger parts. And we focus on manufacturing scopes, uh, which is where our strength is making good quality optics. You can see that we have some of the materials back that we work with. We'll machine in aluminum, brass, stainless steel, uh, some of the small components that go into our scope here, and then occasionally we'll do small runs of big parts, and all of our prototype work is also done on these machines as well. That's awesome. Now, I, from what I understand, a lot of your stuff that you do outside of here is local to Orange County, Riverside, a lot of Southern California manufacturers that um, do some of the other components that you outsource. We do try to keep the work as local as we can, that way we can control our quality, but we also support our local economy as well. That's awesome. Yeah, we have uh, vendors from as close as uh, Fountain Valley and out into the Riverside area, which is uh, typically within a 50 mile radius of here. So it's easy to get to any of the shops that we need to go to to do any type of inspections, uh, first article approvals to ensure the quality of the components that we're bringing in to build our products with. US Optics is definitely known for their high standards and quality control, so that's, that's great. It's a big part of what makes our optics perform the way they do. So whether we're machining our parts here or bringing in components from outside vendors, this is the beginning process of building an optic. And from here, we'll go over to our sub-assembly area where you'll see some of the work being done to either prepare bodies and knobs or eyepieces for the final uh, production and assembly area. Awesome, let's go take a look. So from the machine shop, whether it's a small component that we manufacture in-house or a part that we outsource from one of our local vendors, everything comes over to our sub-assembly area here where it'll be inspected to make sure it passes our quality standards before it goes into a build. What we have here is Billy working on some eyepiece assemblies and some knob body assemblies. So here you have the eyepiece assembly with its uh, lock ring, the housing, and one of the elements that is crucial to how an optic sees. This is where you're going to control your diopter with this component or the sharpness and the clarity of the reticle image. This is a, a, a body sub-assembly and what you see here is it has the zeroing knobs, which is part of our SR family for short range use. From here, this body assembly along with the eyepiece assemblies will go over to our clean room where other components will be brought into the uh, build process and it'll start taking shape into a scope that you'll be able to put on a weapon and take out to the range. Nice, so this isn't even your clean room and it's, I mean, it's pretty meticulous. It's very clean out here, but this isn't your clean room. This isn't the clean room, yeah. Along the way, uh, we make sure that at every step of the process, we're managing quality. Uh, as you see, when we get into the clean room, uh, it's even more stringent in the build process. That's so awesome. why don't we go take a look at it right now? Yeah, I want to check this out. Absolutely. So once we've gotten through sub-assembly, all the sub-assembled components will come into our clean room area here where the real magic happens in building a scope. Most of the work done in this room will be under microscope for cleaning purposes, as we talked about. Clear glass is going to make sure that you get a clear sight picture. 
Uh, on this line here, we'll do a lot of the lens cleaning, just about all the lens cleaning is done here. There is some final assembly done in these stations as well, but for the most part, these are cleaning stations to ensure the glass is gonna go into the scope with the proper uh, clarity and uh, that there no, there's no dust or any no other type of foreign objects in there and imperfections. It takes a trained eye and hand to be able to get the results that we expect for our standards. It looks a lot easier than it is, uh, but uh, it really does take some time to develop the proper technique to make sure the glass is as clean as it can be. From the cleaning stations, we'll go over to the reticle alignment and gluing stations. This is where uh, the erectors with the reticles will be checked to make sure that everything is square so that we don't get any reticle cant. Uh, any type of reticle cant that we leave in the optic can result in a missed shot at further and further distances. Right. So, so compounds, any minute error here, I mean, it's going to be substantially compounded the further out you go. Absolutely. And, and your optics are, I mean, seen miles. I mean, so it could be a huge difference. We're known for long range shooting and uh, our optics are used by people that push the envelope on distance. So we want to make sure that every time they look through our glass, the shot that they're going to take is going to be on the mark. So our young man here who's doing this, he's probably got one of, not the most important, but a very important job. Absolutely. Everybody along the way has an important job and everyone works as a team. Uh, the communication lines are open in the room here. If things need to be modified or changed, everyone is open to that discussion and the processes will be modified as needed to make sure that we're building the top quality product. So he can never have one of those, oh damn, I don't feel good days. Even when he has a damn, I don't feel good day, our, our, our staff here is committed to uh, what we build and what our mission statement is for our end users. In fact, some of our staff, like Francisco, our former military, Francisco was a Marine, and uh, he puts a lot of the pride uh, that he has as a Marine into his work for building optics as well. That's awesome. Thank you for your service. So another crucial step that we talked about in building a rifle scope to make sure it sees right and is performing at its best is where we set parallax, which is what Benny's doing here. In essence, we're taking our rifle scope and looking into another bigger rifle scope that has a reticle in it okay. to make sure that we have proper alignment, that the knob values are exactly what they say they are, and uh, that the reticle subtends with every uh, click of the knob. Um, this is another crucial step in ensuring that we build the best optic that you can put on top of your rifle. That's awesome. The technology that I'm finding in, in the clean room and the detail to um, craftsmanship and perfection is just, it's bar none. It's, it, it's always a push to build the scopes better every day than the next. If there's an improvement to our processes, we will make the changes to ensure that that's captured in the build. Um, they're hands-on every step along the way. Uh, there's a, a, a clear understanding at each workstation what the objective is to meet and the products have to meet those standards or they won't be passed. Awesome. See, I think out of everything we've seen in your clean room so far, I personally would go nuts doing this. I, I'd just be like, ah. <laughs> it, it's tedious um, and it, it does take some time to train your hands and eyes to do things right. Uh, but we believe that the hands-on approach uh, has, has been effective for us. And uh, that's the way one of our customers is gonna use the optic. Absolutely. So in essence, in our build process and our quality uh, standards, uh, we do have the end user in mind. We're going to go to another part of the clean room area where I'll show you final QC and we'll also see a, a unique area where we do inspection of all of our elements that's more on the front end to make sure that before we put glass into sub-assemblies into an assembled scope, our standards for our glass is being met by our vendors. That's awesome. Right, let's take a look. Let's go. So now we're in our quality control area. There's two steps of the process that uh, reside in this part of the process. We have Alex here, who has well over 40 years of experience in the optical industry, building things that have gone into space. Wow. Um, obviously rifle scopes, so we have a lot of experience with Alex here. And Alex's primary role for the company is to ensure that all of our elements, all of our glass pieces that we get in from our vendors meet our standards before we take them out onto the floor. So what Alex is working on here are the eyepieces that you saw Billy earlier working on putting into housings to get them ready for the build. Terrific. 
in order for it to get out to the floor, it's got to pass inspection here with Alex. And it's got to go through his years of experience in order to be passed and deemed good. And uh, it's frustrating for me to try and even get close to their level of proficiency. Uh, so there's a tre tremendous amount of appreciation and respect for the work that they do. And they have the same for everything that they put into the products that we build. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Alex. One of the last steps in the, the build process is the final quality checks on a finished scope assembly. That's what Trina's doing here. And we see another collimator that's being used to ensure that the reticle is tracking properly, that the knobs when adjustments are made are subtending, that the rheostat works properly, that from the eyepiece through the objective, years of experience have given Trina the ability to spot any type of dust or debris in there. She makes sure that there's nothing there. Basically a last line of defense before we put an optic in a box and ship it to a customer. So nothing gets past her. Nothing gets past her. She, she's the LT of scope inspection. Nice. Awesome. And I mean, it looks like what she does, is, I mean, again, it's very precise. It's very technical. She's got different instruments out, um, calculators, measurements. I mean, she's got everything she needs to make sure that when I get my U.S. optic delivered, I am ear to ear with smiles. Absolutely. There's Trina's signature, whether you know it or not, is on your scope. So when you make that shot, there's one of the people in the many in the process that you have to thank. So if I miss that shot, I say, damn, Trina. It's all on Trina. She's the last <laughs> set of hands on there. <laughs> Unless awesome. we could loop the FedEx man in there and you can blame the guy that delivered it. <laughs> there you go. Right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Trina. We appreciate all your hard work. So the final process in building a scope makes it out to our packaging area where our optics will be put into cartons and we're using a nice protective foam system to make sure that the scope doesn't move during shipping. Everything's packaged up with a user manual. On our T-PAL models, there's a toolkit which includes some tools, O-rings, and a top cap for when you've done your adjustments with an E-REC knob. Uh, and uh, basically, we box everything up, put it on the shelf, get it ready to go for the customer. And everything, again, goes through here. You have one of your uh, skilled team members working on that to make sure it goes out on time, it's safe, it's secure, and everything's together. And it's presentable. We yeah, want to make sure that when the customer opens that box, from the minute they, they pull that flap out of the box and get their scope out, it's a positive experience. All right, guys. So, phenomenal day at US Optics. Make sure that you go and you follow US Optics on your Facebook, your Instagram, and check out their website. They have tons of things going on, um, great content. And of course, follow us on Contingency X on our YouTube, um, our social media. It's all going to be up here uh, on the screen. And uh, share us, like us, support us, support US Optics. Phenomenal quality optics. Personally, I, I can't wait to get my hands on one and get out to the range and try it out. We'll get out there together and hit some steel and punch some paper. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.